Hey folks, hey, it's another episode of Bob. That's what it is. Anyway, enjoy this episode. Um, I do apologise uh, because in my previous videos things did get a bit shaky and I realised that on my phone, my Samsung Galaxy S7 that I use, uh, hello Swallow, <laughs> you see it flying across on my head then, um, uh, the video stabilisation had turned off. I don't know why it turned off, it had turned off. So that's why the videos are quite shaky. So apologies for that. Uh, normal order has been resumed now. I am using a tripod, not right now, but I'm using a tripod more often. So give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, if you must. I don't understand why you would thumbs down it, but, you know, if you must. Um, let me know if you think there's ways I can improve the channel. If you've got questions, email them to me. Church House Classics, all one word, at gmail.com. Um, yeah, and enjoy this video. Right, what we're doing in the meantime though, we're looking at this. So this is the holly that I grabbed off Redshed. Um, and because Bob hasn't got this original engine, I've got a nice Rover ST1 engine in there, which is going to go on Bob uh, with a four-speed uh, four long stick gearbox. And I thought, you know what? This might complement it. So I've done a bit of research. Oh, there's a fuse down there, look at that. Oh my goodness. It's one of those giant fuses that people think are 25 amp and they're not. Right, now, so when you identify these Holly carburetors, this is the detail up here. So you've got the list number, and the list number here tells me it's a 390 cubic foot per minute 4160 Holly. And it comes with an electric choke mechanism, which is what the wires are for. And it comes with a vacuum operated second set of throttle butterflies, full of butterflies. So if we turn it upside down, primary butterflies, and then we've got the secondary butterflies. Primaries are opened by opening the throttle. The seconds are opened by a vacuum off this device here. Um, all looks pretty basic and straightforward. Mechanical fuel pump on the bottom of the so it's an acceleration pump on the bottom of that fills in all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strip this down, give it a damn good clean up and work out what I need to do with it. Take out piles of shite which have come off this engine. And one of the things I wanted to retrieve was the, uh, the water pump because it's in good order. Um, it would appear to be, looking at the insides of it anyway, pretty new. Um, and it certainly has got a nice free kind of um <laughs> there's no movement in the bearings is what i'm trying to say here rather cat candidly but that looks all right isn't it anyway i'm um, trying to get the viscous fan off this thing was a bastard um don't ever thread lock these fucking things guys please and if you do unsubscribe they're reverse threaded because obviously with the rotation of the engine um the reverse thread means it'll never undo when the engine's rotating in its normal direction now with the fan in place you've got the water pump pulley, a fan belt pulley in the place and it's very very difficult to get hold of anything to hold this thing tight. Normally with the fan belt in place and properly adjusted I put this thing on the car and give it a proper good bang righty loosey because it's left handed thread yeah. Um, in this particular case um, it's off the car of course I had to get a Stilson, my biggest Stilson, my Elora uh, gonna be 14 inch yeah 14 inch Elora Stilson just about managed to get enough of a grip on there and with a decent thump i got the viscous fan off now interestingly the viscous fan appears to be good as well it certainly rotates and it's got some drag against it so that'll go on the shelf useful in there i think so anyway um right we're clearing this lot up because today's activity is about aligning this chassis and working out what we've got It's raining. I know a lot of my videos contain rain, but honestly, it's not rained for about two and a half, nearly three months. Well, not during the day anyway. Um, right, okay, so we got the cross member out, as you've seen. Um, one thing I'm quite pleased with, all the bolts are in really good shape. Now, I don't know if these have all been replaced. I suspect they have been. Um, it's possible they're original. I don't know. I don't know the history of the car. All of the bolts are in good shape. Um, the brackets that hold the gearbox mounts have come off, all in one piece, in good shape. 
cross member is largely in good shape. So these things do have their challenges. And that's often where they're challenged. And the reason they're challenged there is because water gets into this void here and there's no hole, or there shouldn't be a hole here for it to drain back out again, which is a bit thick, really. Um, so I tend to just cut here, which grind back there a little bit and allow any water that gets trapped in this piece here, you can't see that, in this piece up here, allows it to drain out. Because otherwise it does that. So what I'm going to have to do here is cut this whole top section out. What I normally do here is take a disc down here, along there, along there, etc. Take this whole piece out, make up a new piece, weld it back on again. And before I weld it back on there, I just drill holes underneath to allow the, 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 you know, whatever fluid is in there to escape. The only other thing we've got is this thing's been over a fairly sizable rock. Um, so we've got a big dent just here and an indentation down here. I'll try and get the slide hammer to pull that out a little bit. Um, I want to look at it a little bit tidier than that. But overall, this thing, apart from these, these top edges here, which always rot out, is in pretty good shape. It'll do. Oh yeah. Right. Okie doke. Let's have a quick put away of these bits and bobs. Then I'm going to start measuring out where these front sections need to go. Start cleaning up the steel. And see if we can get them. Doing a whole load of filming again. Because I realised that uh, image stabilisation on my phone had been turned off. Um, <laughs> bit daft really, wasn't it? Um, right. Okay. So uh, this is the head that I was cleaning up. Uh, the head that had the good guides and so forth on it. Now, I've given it a good going over. Uh, the problem I've got with it is that the exhaust seats are not in great condition. That, that one's all right. The valve correspondingly is serviceable. I think the worst one I had was this one. Look at the state of that. That's not a good valve seat, that one. Now this is at the back end of the cylinder head, so this is one of the cylinders that was hydrolocked. So some of that could be salt water corrosion. Oddly, the valve is passable, or was passable, because I'm going to have to replace the valve now and have a new seat put in. But all of the exhaust seats on this have varying degrees of um, issue. There's quite a lot of damage here on this one. I don't know where that came from. All of the guides are good. The head is as flat as I can test it. Uh, all of the exhaust seats. There's another particularly bad one. I'm going to, I'm going to struggle to get those ground in. They need um, either they, they need a, a, a valve seat grinder, or they need new seats. So uh, that that's uh, just going to go on the shelf. To be honest, I'm not going to do anything with it. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put the uh, the valve springs and the collets back in so it's all back in the order from whence it came and lob it on the shelf i've marked up the cylinders and i've also tagged it to say what it needs it came from a hydrolocked engine uh, it needs checking for trueness and it needs the exhaust valve seat certainly but the guides are good right so that's that now on to this um so on the chassis uh, I don't know how much the original footage I did yesterday is giving me off any use whatsoever because image stabilisation wasn't on, as I said. I've taken off the cross member. Um, so the metal behind the cross member, this bit here that rots out sometimes is all quite solid. And similarly, on this side, is in quite good shape. The chassis is straight. I've got all of the um, gearbox mounts and so forth off. It did amuse me um, that... These are the gearbox mounts. Metalastic. When did you last see one of those? <laughs> Everyone calls them metalastic bushes, but they ain't, they've not been metalastic for God knows how long. Anyway, the big news yesterday was uh, getting these welded on. So what I did here was found the guide in the workshop manual. Now bear in mind, um, pre-86, I think, the chassis is different. The only part that's really different is this rear cross member, not rear cross member, this mid cross member. That's different on the uh, 70s and early 80s cars. I don't know the exact change of a point, but the later cars, uh, such as my uh, 90s Range Rover, have a round cross member here. 
it's a bit different in the way it's all set up. But otherwise, they're actually not that different overall. I don't think these bits exist on the 90s chassis because the gearbox cover is not designed to come out. Um, right, so it was just a case of looking at the parts on the chassis that I wanted to measure. Now, initially, I had a problem with this measurement here, measurement 19, which is between the, the, the front chassis um, uh, bumper mounts. And 19 on here, check figure, 630.93 um, centimetres. Now, that's wrong. <laughs> 63 point zero point point one point zero one uh, centimeters so when i measured that uh, it was coming up at 65 centimeters between those two and then i was thinking well okay with 65 here uh, and 65 here and so forth and i was gonna, then I suddenly realized these things have got fucking two mil plates on them on the inside which are supposed to be there um, and therefore the bumper mounts because the bumper mounts through those two there on that on that front edge so that explains why 19 is listed as 630 i'll just say 630 and 34 which is also the width of the chassis at the back end is 635 so 635 is the measurement i was getting i'm happy with them they're straight they're square um, i've got them as square as i possibly can um, in order to do it effectively, all I did was just tack a piece of angle iron onto the underside here. This is going to come off, so I'm not going to leave this piece on here. And obviously I'm going to seam weld around here. But I wanted to make sure everything was absolutely where it needs to be before I got that far. Using the ruler, using the um, um, spirit level, the problem you've got with any of this shit, by the way, is that there's a weld that runs along the middle of the top here. And this goes in various different heights. However, there are points where you can measure how level this thing is. So the top of that gives me a measurement just to the left side of the bubble. There it is. I need a new bubble in my spirit level. And then if I measure similarly onto these mounting points here, the front body mounting points, it's more or less exactly the same. We'll go to this point. And even though I've turned the spirit level around, you can see the bubble's gone to the other end, which is good news, isn't it? Um, and I'm going to turn it around again and go to the back here. We'll measure it across the top of this. Now, there's probably some dirt underneath that. Yeah, that's about right. It's about where it was before. And then I'm not going to bother measuring the green bit because that's going to get cut off. But when the back wheels come off, I shall measure across the top of the spring uh, turrets, back and front. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, this chassis is straight and it's square. Now, I did also measure up, took some measurements. I can't measure the whole thing, but I have got measurements that go from the centre of the spring turrets, front and back, to the uh, forward sill mounting, rear sill mounting, to the bulkhead mounting, which is there. So bulkhead mounting to the back of the rear spring mounting is 27 item 27 sorry which is 1722 which e everything there is working so 172 centimeters i'm really happy that this chassis is square and it's straight just missing big chunks four of which i can put back on it now today i'm going to finish off welding these on now i'm happy that they're square and they're in place i'm not worrying too much about all this crap that's all over them because this whole chassis is going to be grip blasted back um, when I go over it with the wire brush wheel, the knot wheel, it goes back to bare steel really, really, really easily, this thing. Uh, there's a layer of red oxide, and then there's some black paint over the top of that, and then there's green paint over the top of that. Um, there's areas such as this, where it's showing signs of surface rust, but it's really, really, really smooth. Um, in fact, the further down the chassis we go, a quick scrape finds me clean shiny steel you see it all there that shiny bit there is all shiny steel so the chassis i think is actually what was, what i've got of the chassis <laughs> is in really good order happy with it um right so finish off welding those i'm going to grind off also grind off 
this remains of this old engine mount here. So this is something that went on, I think possibly for a diesel engine at some point in the car's history. It's had a diesel engine or possibly another V8. It might have had one of those boat anchor jimmy things in. Um, but uh, it looks like that is original welding from factory. This has been pitch and snotted back on again. So I'm probably going to end up having to cut this thing off, tidy up the welding, and see if I can weld it on a bit tidier than that. Uh, there's a big patch here. I want to grind this back and find out what's underneath it, because I've got a feeling it is just where another, another mount's been, in which case I can do that tidier than that. And then all of this crap over here can come off. And if the welding on this is anywhere near as nice as that, I'll probably be able to knock it off with a hammer. The crank I've decided I'm not going to use. I'm not going to do anything with this crank. Um, the more I look at the con rods, there's two, I think there's two or three bent and twisted con rods, mainly twisted. The crank's got this really nasty mark here. I don't know what it is. It's quite deep though. Um, it's a standard crank. I've got no idea what's been going on with it. It's obviously hydro-locked. Um, I don't know whether this thing's got a crack in it, which I'm not going to find out until I put it all back together again. It's just not worth the aggravation. So I'm going to weigh that. Uh, I'll take the flywheel bolts out of it first of all. Otherwise that's an, and the Woodruff key. Important stuff. If anyone's got interest in this car, by the way, when it's all finished, it's probably worth you um, reaching out to me. Full length, restored, June 1971. Uh, Range Rover Classic. It will be welded up. It will be, have a good body frame on it. It will be... Uh, of, uh, the idea is I get this to an MOT standard. And then let someone else do the detailing. But if you've got an interest in this car, then get in touch with me. Um, because uh, it comes to things like, you know, gearbox and um, engine. My idea at the moment is I'm going to do a 3.5 high compression, not totally high, 9.35 to 1 compression ratio engine with that big Holly carburetor on it. And I should get... A fair few horses out of it. Long stick gearbox. I've got a pair of them to choose from. So that's the one that came in the car. Which is a C suffix. And down here I've got a B suffix um, gearbox. So eyes, eyes with those. Probably that one. Again, it will need stripping down and rebuilding. Now when I strip this axle down, I've actually got a feeling these swivel balls... Are relatively new. There's a couple of um, things that lead me to suggest that. First of all, there's no sign of any rust or pitting on them, and secondly, the oil's not pouring out the back of them. The discs, as well, don't have a lip on the edge. I mean, I probably won't be using these discs again because they've, they've got quite, you know, heavy rust on them. But I am wondering, perhaps, if the, all this front suspension was rebuilt before. And I'm going to end up taking it all apart again. I want the diff out anyway, because I want to just check the diff tolerances and check it for broken teeth and warm bearings and so forth. And it can all go back together again with a new gasket. Probably a new um, flange for now um, and new flange seal for now. And then the axle can go back on the chassis, you see. Keep it mobile. Well, that's these done. Done them on three sides. Not done the bottom yet. And there's a couple of pinholes you can see here and about. So I'll do all of this lot. Uh, once uh, I have uh, completed the underside, they ain't going no place. Nice sturdy weld down the inside there. Not my most beautiful, but it will do the job. Um, I mean, most of the welding on this thing is fairly agricultural at the best. <laughs> this is all factory welding. Uh, that might not be factory welding, that one there. That might be pigeon snot. No, I'd say it's factory welding. It's the same as that side. Um, Weld it down the outside, just ground them all flat. It will do the job. It's straight, it's square. So when the chassis goes upside down, then I'll complete the underside of that. I just need to remind myself, because um, I just really don't fancy welding this thing upside down just now. Um, right. I think next we're going to do this. I was looking at this earlier on, actually, because on this side... It's not too bad. So what I might try and do is grind this weld back, see how strong it actually is. Worst case scenario, if I can't get this look anywhere near decent, I'll end up just cutting it off here 
and here and weld in another piece of 3mm steel. Um, I'm certainly going to have to weld a piece of 3mm steel on the top here and fill this gap in so it looks like that one. But I think it's achievable. It's just, what a fucking mess. <laughs> yes, there's not a lot you can really say to it, is there? Uh, dog chew still not being collected, folks. Anyone knows who dog chew this is? Um, they're more than welcome to come and get it. It's covered in sparks at the moment. Right, what I want you to do is just get a bit of zinc primer over the top of all this. Uh, I also think that the steering box have been leaking for some time in the past because there's quite a lot of power steering fluid inside this rail. Um, and as I was welding it, the, the plumes of thick white smoke pouring out of the various chassis holes. <laughs> it got rather warm in here, but uh, yeah, I'm pleased enough with that. What do you reckon? Blind, more, blind man on a galloping horse wouldn't notice, would he? Oh no. Right, been busy on this area here. Let's move Mr. Grinder out of the way. Been busy on this area here where all that um, shock was. Um, I've actually gone through the steel in a couple of places because I think the steel might have been dented in the first place. So for instance, there, where the big black mark is, I've gone through there and I've obviously gone through at the top up here. The rest of it is strong. So I was thinking about cutting it all out, but I think actually what I'm going to try and do here is, is I'm just going to try and plug weld it. Um, which is literally just getting a nice pool of weld around it and building it up and building it up until it kind of you know, sits in there. Um, that piece there is a, a high build of weld um, that it's almost like the chassis was dented in order to put whatever mounts on that they had. So I'm going to try and plug weld these because I think the rest of it is okay. Um, on this side, I've not even started this side yet. It's getting towards, you know, an hour where it's not really that sociable to use the angle grinder. So I'm not going to. Got to be responsible with your neighbours, you know, folks. Um, you think it's in the middle of fucking nowhere around here, I tell you. Um, I mean, that's my dad's house there, but you think it's in the middle of nowhere. But, you know, even so, angle grinder screaming away. Don't I'll carry. Um, so I'm going to... Nice, isn't it? I'm going to just see if I can plug those, then I'm going to sort of clear up for the day. Tomorrow's main job is to get that thing sorted out. Um, if, of course, I can't do this. So that all needs sorting. I want to take this patch off. So I'm going to flap that entire patch back and see what's behind it. Uh, clean up this. There's a, I can see a weld along the top here. In fact, if we get the. If I take my visor off, because I'm wearing the visor because I've been grinding and it keeps slipping down over my eyes. Uh, it's just generally pissing me off. Right. It's the wire brush. And along the top, a fucking wire brush right there, you tall. If you go along here, you can actually see there is a tiny bit of welding on the top of the chassis rail here. I think it's something to do with um, the original mount that might have been somewhere around here. Because it kind of mirrors then the mount that would have been on that side okay um, and I think that patch there is because they cut it off and blah and I think this welder on the top here is just left over from that mount so I'll grind that back tomorrow might find some of this shit but I don't know yet we'll see what's the worst that can possibly happen well that was successful so down here just really is a little, tiny little bit over here I want to still just put a plug of weld in, but that's if this the rest of this panel was okay. See the top here, where this island is, you can see when you're looking from the top that the chassis rail's been bashed inwards, um, and I suspect that was as part of the uh, bodge to fix the uh, um, the engine mount. So it's solid metal now, all solid steel. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a skim of filler over that high spot up there. Um, and that will do it. There's a similar dent here, but I think that's more to do with the rock. I'm going to put the slide hammer in there and just give that a good yank out. I might have to get it a bit warm, first of all, and I'm out of gas um, on the blowtorch. But all I do is, I'll, if I hook something in there and give it a tug, um, so if I hook something in here and just give it a good tug, probably find that that 
pulls that sizable dent out. You can see, can you see, you can see about there, can't you? You see it's pushed in about here. It's pushed in around there. And it's just not very pretty. Most of this area is actually hidden anyway. Um, there's the bumper, obviously goes onto these parts. There's a, a grill that goes in above the top here and the radiator sits on top of this rail here. So it's not that visible. Um, down here, by the way, I know that's untidy. You don't need to warn me. I've not welded on the, the, the bottom edge of the chassis rail yet. But I think with that done, I'm happy enough now that this rail is sort of as good as it's going to get. Um, I haven't been... Oh, sorry. Now, there's one more thing I need to do on this rail. This thing. So I'm going to have to cut a chunk of this out, probably from here, right the way along, and weld a new lip onto it. Um, I might need to get Mr. Flappy on it to find out how much of the original steel is left on there. For some reason that one really has kind of, you know, succumbed to the rust. This one, which I know the end's been chopped off, it is way better and all the others. So this one, this side, the other front outrigger, fine, no problems at all. And that one at the back, again, been chopped off, but the rest of it is fine. Um, I really want to deal with this shit at the front first of all. Um, and then I'll roll the chassis forward and do the shit at the back. But that's starting to look like a chassis again. Has that got pigeon snot at the back of it as well? No, it's mud. So that mount I don't think was ever removed. This one obviously was. Um, I can make it look pretty again. Um, it's more or less in the right location. Like I say, if I can grind these welds or flap these welds back on this side and tidy those, um, then I can soon pull that Put, put a blob of welding there to kind of make up that area again. I mean, if anything, it does look like the mount's been welded on slightly too low, but then there's enough give on this thing that uh, we can fix that. Up. I mean, I suppose I could just measure measure the height across. I need the front wheels off, really. But it'll be all right. It's just, it's this that I find offensive. <laughs> There's no way is that staying on there. I mean, look at it. Really didn't want that to come off, did they? <laughs> I mean, honestly, it makes my worldie look brilliant. <laughs> Fuck, you know? I mean, that's stick welding, that. I'm sure that's stick welding. It's just a mess. And I can see there's a patch behind here as well. So we might need to cut this off to find out what's going on on the chassis rail behind. But if I can get away without cutting it off, I shall do so. Um, it's strong enough to support the engine. And it would appear to have been so. Then it's uh, just a case of tidying things up a little bit. As you can see, I mean, all these factory welds, none of these are particularly pretty. Okay, good welds, but none of them have been dressed back. They haven't wasted time doing that. I'll just tidy these welds back, which aren't where they should be. Take the patch off, find out what's behind it, tidy this lot up, and then we're done at the front, apart from that fella, which I'm going to work out what I'm going to do with him. What I might end up doing is actually replacing the whole side of it down to the front and then weld in a piece on it because the steel is still pretty thick. Where's Mr. Tappy gone? Mr. Tappy is always a good indicator of uh, how good the steel is. There's Mr. Tappy up there, look. He's got a nice pointy end on him. It's almost like someone's used a torch, I reckon, on that. Started to cut through it and decided against it. I might even be able to... I mean, that is pretty strong down there. I might even be able to plug weld that once I've ground it all back to bare steel. It might not need a patch. I'm, I'm more likely to um, to butt weld in to, you know, to make it look tidy. 
because there's so few patches on this on this chassis i really don't want to start kind of you know putting patches over the top of the steel the first patch i found on this was at the back end here patch that really shouldn't be there where was it I was on there down there no yeah no where was it i found it was it on the outside oh yes it was over here and there should be a body mount behind that right what's nice about these carbs is the <laughs> the extent to which you can strip them down so the whole plate including all the throttle butterflies the throttle mechanism and everything just comes off in your end <laughs> um which is you know very useful for when it, when it comes to cleaning these things up so a lot of this i've just cleaned up using um some petrol some geyser and so forth Give it a very very light wire brush over i still need to clean the gasket faces up I still need to get that all sorted out um, a little bit of ultrasonic cleaning on this one but unfortunately the tank i've got down here in devon is way too small um, to put something like this in so if i go home in the next week possibly two i will grab the bigger tank because it's unlikely i'm going to be able to use my main home and not my second home um, until july so i'm certainly down here um, for a little while longer now this chunk here this is the main body of the carburetor so you've got the primary um, uh, throttles and you've got the secondary throttles which are vacuum actuated actuated that's the cold start mechanism and then here we've got the vacuum actuator and the idea is this thing draws a vacuum after it's dropped all its screws all over the table there they are let's just drop knock them all out before they all fall out Let's get a bloody tripod. That's a bit better. Right, so on the vacuum uh, actuator, I believe it draws a vacuum through this little hole here. There was a, an O-ring on it. Um, if I put my finger over that and push this in, it comes out again. So I suspect that the diaphragm in here is tired. Um, it's certainly hanging out. On the edges here so i could i could soon fix that as part of the rebuild kit i believe you get the diaphragm for in there on the bottom of the main jet there's a small accelerator pump which all it does is as you open the throttle it pulls that lever down pushes the diaphragm up in there and then squirts a little bit of extra fuel through this hole here and into the main body i don't know where it comes out on the main body and in here you can see the way that these uh, floats are adjusted so by adjusting this screw here, you adjust the float height. Clever stuff, huh? So I need to give these a really damn good clean up. Um, these little bits like this, they can go in my little tank here that I got in Devon. You see, that's, that's kind of the state it was coming out in. And this is the state after a quick dousing in petrol. Um, and then obviously give it a deep cleanse. Again, this throttle bottle, this carburetor body is far too big um, to fit onto the, uh, into my um, cleaner. Now it does actually look like this comes off as well. I'm just looking here. There's a gap around the edge here. I also need to work out what happens about a fuel return because there's only a fuel feed on this setup, which is on the primary float tank. There's a fuel feed. There's no fuel return anywhere. Um, so it could well be that I need to work on that or just lower and regulate the pressure coming out of the pump. So really once this lot's been deep cleansed, it's a case of cleaning every single one of these little holes and things out, really going over it with a fine tooth comb. Um, getting everything absolutely pristine clean, blown through. I think these are the two main jets, I think. Some sort of little pop it thing there I don't know these carbs that well but you know it's only a machine we should be able to work it out between us now it does actually look like that comes off there do we think that comes off there there might not be a gasket in there Yeah. 
or there might be. I'm not going berserk with it. It looks like someone might have had it apart in the past, you see. That's flexing. That is moving. Right, let's see if we can get that off. And yes, it is just another glued on gasket piece here. Again, look at all this crap in here. It all needs properly cleaning up. Soon happen. It's not going to be a problem. It'll work. It's reducing this thing down even further inside. I don't think there's too much more I'm going to be able to take off this main body though. Makes that laugh, isn't it? Let's make sure I get all these new gaskets. Right, I think that was it on the carburetor for now. I'll just show you roughly where I was with it. Cleaning it up, stripping it down, assessing it. Never done one of these before. What's the worst that could possibly happen? There's a rebuild kit that seems to be available from uh, some of the uh, Holly suppliers. It seems to be in the region of about 60, 70 quid. So most likely that'll be where I go to. Um, I'll obviously just make sure everything's uh, absolutely perfectly clean before it all goes back together again. We'll have a mega thirsty carburetor, eh? Oh yes. It's just too much of a mess in here. Um, so I've knocked the, the original remains of the body mount, uh, engine mount off. <laughs> Pigeon snot down the inside. I'm going to grind all this flat. Leave that, grind all this flat, take that piece off there completely. I don't know what it is. Dodge your bit of angle line. You can see there at the bottom. I was looking underneath. You can just see it's shit. So that's what we're going to get cut off um, and ground back. Um, and then I'm going to have to make up a new edge here uh, for the inside edge of the mount. Now, let's have a look at this thing. So really, there's enough there for me to do something with it. Um, but it was just too painful to start thinking about how this is going to work before. It's just a mess. So I'm not going to video it because I'm making a lot of noise, but... I think next thing, just cut down here, run a cutting disc down there. As you can see, a lot of this is stick welded on the inside. Um, it's just pigeon snot. It's, it hasn't stuck to anything. If you look on the inside here, that ran down that groove there. There's absolutely no penetration whatsoever, apart from that lump, that bogey there. That's the only place it was really held on, on the inside. Um, so it makes sense to do it properly. And again, you start cleaning the chassis back, you get to shiny metal. It could be that I end up getting a better mount from a scrap car, I don't know. But you can see already that when I mount this at the correct height, uh, it makes a world of difference. That, that line there is straight. I'll double check it on, on one of the other cars, but that line I think should be straight. So if I take a straight edge from there, I think that should be up there like that somewhere. I think quite a lot of this thing's been cut out. So it could well be that I end up getting someone with a scrap chassis just to cut chonk, chonk, chonk for me. Um, this might be a bridge too far, this piece. Oh, look, there's a nice big grinder mark on the bottom there as well. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. But you can see why I did that. I mean, I, I, I even chopped out the... Uh, what did I do with it? I dumped it somewhere. Bloody great big lump of metal that I cut out of here, seeing if I could do something with that. And it, again, it's just that's when I found out there was another plate underneath. Oh, nice big sprinter. Oh my gosh, gonna get rid of that fucker. Yeah. Right, let me go get rid of that and I'll come back to you. Yeah. Blob behind my finger was a bloody uh, wire from the wire cut brush. Just down here, sitting there, waiting. Either that had gone behind my finger already, and I just touched something and it banged it right in. Went down that far. Anyway, this is how good this was. Literally about a minute and a half with the angle grinder. Tap, tap, tap. And you can see, zero penetration. Only all that fucking great blob of world up here. The only place it penetrated was up here. So I ain't going to do 
Uh, there we are. Didn't penetrate over there either. What a waste of time, eh? Um, so this is very much like the welding that took place at the back end on those um, on those outriggers. So a fucking shitload of welds, but not actually doing anything. Look, all that weld on there, and nothing really holding it to there. You can see there that is unwelded, clean bare metal. <laughs> Gotta wonder, I mean, it's quite artistic, I might sell that. It's probably worth a few quid. Right, having done that, here I can see the original location for the um, for the mount, for the body mount, for the engine mount I should say. So I think really it's just a case of grinding all this shit back, getting a flat surface. It does actually look just a rubber pine. So I'm just going to grind it back to stock and then assess the situation and what I need to do. Um, and I think I'm going to have to talk to someone that's scrapping a Range Rover and cut the engine mount off the passenger side. I'm going to need the arse end of a chassis anyway. Might end up being easy just to get a scrap chassis. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Um, actually, it's one of the cars in the field needs a chassis mind you the work i'm doing on this car if the rest of the chassis on the car in the field uh, is, is uh, you know is, is relatively okay like this one then it probably end up just welding another back end of a chassis onto it we'll see because this one you see it's got the all important chassis number down here and you chaps ever wanted to find a chassis number of a range rover they're pretty much always stamped right in the middle of the four bolts I'm not going to do a zoom in on it because you get the chassis number, but four bolts for the steering box and the chassis number sits in the middle there. And you can see there is a chassis number. It runs along there. Nicely stamped. And it's right for the car. <sighs> well, it looks better already, I must admit. <laughs> Why do people do this shit? And that, I think that's been a, a gas axe that's done that. I'm going to give it a proper good clean up because I can't see how that edge there is so solid yet has rusted away. I think someone's been fucking around playing with the gas axe and they probably ended up cutting the wrong bit off because they were supposed to cut the back ones off which they ended up doing with a hopefully a one mil angle grinder. Um, so once I've done this chunk I'll clean that up and then I'm going to cut these bits off the back right at the very back and see if I can line those up. I did go over the top of this chassis rail up here just to see what it was like up here. A little bit of uh, snotty welding up here, which I don't think is anything to do with the modifications. That might actually be a factory piece of snot there. New welder came in, perhaps. I don't know. It all looks alright, apart from... The add-ons. <laughs> Fucking crap, isn't it? Right, onwards. That piece, I just knocked it off. It's down here somewhere. It just fell off. Um, this patch over here, I've got no idea what the patch was for. Uh, there's no rust underneath it. It's the other missing bolt holes that I had for the left-hand drive steering box, if it was there. So the patch has come off see no reason why it was there um, it possibly something to do with the uh, the revised engine mount uh, now I just noticed while I'm here there's another big bracket on the bottom of the chassis over here which I'm gonna have to cut off as well um, if I remember rightly that had the steering um, uh, uh, support uh, bolted to it right it's a step forward, isn't it? <laughs> you guys think I'm nuts, don't you? I think I'm nuts. Ten minutes later with the grinder and a flap disc. And there we go. I've left this little flap on the top here um, because it gives me a reference point for the top mount. But when I get a 
another mount because I don't think I'm going to be able to use this one. I just don't think there's enough of it for me to uh, be able to go with it. I mean, okay, it needs grinding back first of all, but I don't know how it was cut off, etc., etc., etc. Um, and also, it's quite thick steel. You see, someone's had that with a gas axe as well. That's been that's been cut off. Uh, with oxycetylene or gas or whatever, which is why it makes me think this has too, uh, which is why um, I'm going to give that a clean up next. But that's as far as that's going to get done for now. Um, I'll just put a lick of primer over it just to protect it, um, as I will with all the other bits and bobs on here. And then I think it's a case of waiting till I get another um, chunk off a scrap chassis. So all the bits I cut off that are down here. <laughs> Absolutely tons and tons. I mean, look at all the grinding sparks down there, that's all come off this area. I mean the original plan might have been to try and grind that all back flat and tidy it up, but with this bloody great big plate on the inside and it just let's give the car a fighting chance. Someone loved it once. Um and we'll uh Get it back to the way it should be. But that's a step in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. This carburetor. Um, so the only way I've been able to get this gasket off is by giving a proper going over in the dirt cheap, tiny ultrasonic tank um, with geyser in it. <laughs> Probably not recommended, I know. Um, and then that soaks it enough. And then with a drill and a wire brush, I'm able to uh, clean the gasket faces up. But well, someone has done a proper job of gluing these gaskets on, I tell you. They really have. Because they're buggers, they're, they really are not letting go. So I'm going to give this another clean and then we can, we can move on. So this is the float chamber. That can come out. That can go in. I'll give that another clean. Um, and I've got all these bits over here that need cleaning as well. Now, now that's out, I'll give it a going over with the steel wall. That normally gets them, you know, looking really quite nice. Okay, so these two have just come off, as you can see, the welding, again, pretty snotty. Now, I had assumed that these had come off here. However, they haven't. <laughs> but they might still work. They might still be okay for me. Um, I need to measure out how far the uh, yeah the, uh, the, the the hole needs to go for now, and I might be able to butt weld them together. Um, trying to think where they would. So, for instance, you can see here on this front outrigger, the hole is off centre towards the front. If I go to the one on the other side, it kind of matches this one. I wonder if they are. No, because they're not wide enough. They wouldn't be wide enough for front ones. So I think they probably are back outriggers, but off another car. So that's kind of reassuring. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm lining up roughly where it should go and then measuring the width of the, uh, the kind of the chassis across here against the width of the piece I've got. And you can see that's considerably wider. It's about a centimetre wider. Whereas this piece, if I can work out how far out it needs to go, and I'll be able to do that using my handy diagram, um, and then I can chop this off and butt weld it up. It will work. Of course it's going to work. It's definitely going to work. Yes.